Ladies and gentlemen, hello. Before starting, I want to say that this video is completely subjective. If you want objectivity, you can go watch IGN or GameSpot. They pretend to be objective, I don't. Now with that out of the way, Bleach Brave Souls is the most boring, unfun game I've ever played. No, unfun is probably not a word, but you get what I mean. Hopefully in this video I'll be able to bring up fairly new points about why this game is just bad. Anyway, let's start the game and see what makes me dislike it this much. Loading. Okay. Loading. Loading. Okay, close that. Loading. Okay, it's his birthday. That's that's great. Thank you. Alright, daily login bonus. Thank you, Rukia. Loading. Okay, let me let me collect my gifts. Okay. Loading. Close. Alright. So, to start, uh, I recently got Can't Fear Your Own World Halibel, the Technique version, and she's still 5 stars, so I wanna max her out. Loading. First, uh, Soul Tree. Gonna max her out. Loading. Multi Power Up. Okay. Okay. Loading. Uh oh. Now I gotta close this, cause I can't evolve her from here. Evolve. Loading. Very important cutscene here. Soul tree. Loading. Multi power up. This is great. Going great so far. EXP. Oh, I forgot to augment her. Well, time to go back. Augment. Uh oh, don't have enough characters. Time to use some of my tickets. Loading. 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 Alright, I give up, man. You see what's happening here? Mild frustration upon mild frustration, minor inconvenience upon minor inconvenience, loading upon loading upon loading, results in a generally frustrating and terrible experience. And I haven't even started playing yet. Speaking of playing, let's move on to the next part. Gameplay. Single player quests can be described with three simple words. I am bored. I am bored. Now I came to this unfortunate realization when this guy was released. If you've seen any top units slash characters for auto wing lists, then you've probably seen this Grimjow. He has it all. Damage reduction soul trait, good PvE killer, poise, flurry, hit hidden enemies, guard break, a cool jacket. He has it all. And I wanted to get him badly. So I summoned on both the main banner and his individual banner. So what do I actually like about this Grimjow beside his jacket and design? Nothing. I don't like his strong attacks, I don't like his Nat string, I don't like Nat characters in general. Now Grimjow isn't even one of my top 3 espadas. But I wanted this character to be able to auto quests. That's it. I wanted him just to allow myself to play this game less. Now I don't know about you. But I consider that to be a problem. Now that we've grinded enough single player quests and powered up enough characters, it's time to move on to multiplayer. Also known as co-op. The game mode where your skills truly shine. I'm sorry, did I say skills? I meant characters. There's no skill in this game, but more on that later. For now, co-op. Co-op is fuck. The servers are bad, like Nintendo multiplayer servers bad. What in your opinion might kill any multiplayer game? Yes, lag, and co-op in this game is nothing but lag. There's always an absurd amount of lag, it's both hilarious and sad at the same time. It's laggy to the point that if you're not the host, you cannot clear a room with your soul bomb even with a 5 out of 5 unit. It is frustrating, it is not fun, and it's just not enjoyable. Next point is something I mentioned back in this video. Introducing the all new Power Leap. Witness one fifth of your beloved hard earned characters become obsolete with the release of only two new characters in the What the Fuck Are You Doing K Lab Power Tier. Fifth anniversary Ichigo and Byakuya. As much as this last bit sounds like a joke, 
it is not. Power creep is a very real issue in this game and Caleb keeps doubling down on this direction. Instead of making the game skill based, they insist on making the game collection based. A collection based game that constantly makes huge chunks of your collection obsolete. Does that make sense to you? To elaborate on this a bit more, I'm going to compare BBS to a game that I now strongly dislike, but for reasons different to the ones that make me dislike BBS. League of Legends. Last time I played this game was one year ago, so I have no idea how it is right now. But back when I played, it did have a collection aspect to it, as in you had to buy champions either with in-game currency or with money if you want to waste your own money. However, the main focus was on skill. Riot Games, as much as I hate them, did not make older champions obsolete. And if a champion becomes significantly worse than other champions, it gets reworked. And unlike BBS's Resurrections, League of Legends reworks made champions usable again. Resurrections, on the other hand, don't even make older characters viable as links most of the time. And just when you think that K-Lab is finally going to make Resurrections good, they hit you with the latest batch. Absolute garbage. Another reason why power creep is not a good thing is the fact that there are some fan favorite characters without good versions. Because the good versions are no longer good. I cannot imagine how hard life must have been for Kisuke fans before his latest version was released. His only decent version was the last Can Fear Your Own World version, and he was outclassed by almost all speed characters released this year. Anyway, my next point is one that absolutely no one had talked about before. PvP. Fuck this game mode. Game mode, boys. This shit doesn't even qualify as a game mode. All you do is slap two poison flurry characters and Ugram on your team, Refresh till you find an opponent with bonus you can beat. And voila, that's it. There's no skill and no strategy like the rest of the game. Except here you don't even get to play. You don't even get to press auto. It is boring. It's a chore that I have to do in order to get to third seat and unlock extreme co-op so I can get to experience the glorious co-op lag. Now let's talk about actually playing PvP though. Why can't I change my team here like in guild quests and epic raids? Or a better question is, why can't I edit my characters here like in guild quests and epic raids? Why do I have to press on this Ichigo? Loading, augment, accessories, sort, mind, and then put it here, character link, loading, and then go back, loading. Why do I have to click here to see this guy's team? And why is it not actually his team? Fixing PvP is not that hard. They can easily make it a strategy based game mode. Contrary to popular belief, I think Ugram is a step in the right direction, believe me or not. Why? Well, he broke the meta. He shattered the meta. Now they can start clean. Caleb, don't release a Ugram counter. Instead, make PvP characters just as strong as he is. Release them every month or so. And so, in a few months, we'll have a plethora of new PvP characters with equal power, but also with slight advantages over each other such as Attribute or Killer. Let us see the opponent's teams. Let us change our own teams on the go, without having to go back to the edit screen. I am sure that none of this will happen though. We're getting a PvP revamp, and I'm 100% positive it'll be moving away from skill and strategy, and moving towards transcendence. Just like the guild quest revamp was. The next point is the friend system. The absolute worst friend system I have ever seen in a game. Such a garbage reward that was so useless that people invented a whole superstition that com multis give extra luck when summoning. Just to find some meaning behind this sad existence. But forget the rewards. I can't even invite my friends to co-op rooms or epic raids. What the f*** is the use of this shit? Last but not least... is the Brave Souls Passports. Especially the more expensive one. 
You can get the Rainbow Move Source if you subscribe for 3 months in a row. Which is equivalent, as I've heard, to about $80. So what else can you get for $80? Let's see. Now tell me that these two games have the same value as the 3 month subscription. Well why do you play the game if you hate it so much then, Isotope? Well, because it's Bleach. I want to ask you guys a question. And try to answer truthfully. If this game was not Bleach, if it was any other IP, or a new original IP, would you guys actually play it? There is one more reason though. The one thing that K-Lab does correctly. The designs. As I've said before, 5th Anniversary Ichigo is my favorite design of Ichigo. I like Spirit Society Rukia more than the Halloween version of Rukia. I like Spirit Society Rangiku more than the Halloween version of Rangiku. I like Desert Society Rukia more than the weird genie Rukia. But that's all the value I can think of when it comes to this game. The designs. That's it. The truth is... The truth is... This video is not just a review of Bleach Brave Souls. It is an expression of my frustration that this is the best Bleach game we have. When I look at Bleach games, I'm instantly reminded of Pokemon games. Us Pokemon fans have waited about two decades for a mainline Pokemon game on a home console. You know, to be able to ride the waves on Lapras' back, travel the skies, riding on Lugia. Have a non-scripted adventure in the world of Pokemon. Instead we got this upscaled 3DS piece of trash game which barely runs when you turn on Wi-Fi in the wild area. We got this heap of trash wondering what could have been. Bleach has enough lore and world building to make a great open world game or even a Soulsborne game. Enough characters to make a superb fighting game. Heck, enough characters to make a fantastic MOBA game that I'd be addicted to till I die. But instead we're stuck here. Deciding which passport to buy. Wondering what could have been. That being said, I chose the cheaper passport. 